I'm going to show you a pre-processing trick that you can use to uh, clean your AVIs up and then we'll go through uh, Registax and, and uh, also a little bit of Photoshop edit maybe at the end. Um, but anyway, let me show you uh, the AVI clip that I have. And this is a uh, bar load also. You see it's leaning a little bit towards the green. I used Next Image 5 by Celestron and also a Celestron Next, Next Star 4SE mount for tracking. But this is the whole AVI clip here. And you can see some drift in the flame, frame and uh, also where the wind's getting a hold of the scope. It's a relatively long telescope and the wind was pushing it around. It's not a very well centered. AVI clip, but that's uh, the kind of example that we need. This is the full thing you're seeing here. Pretty good contrast for a cheap telescope there. I'll just let the whole AVI play all the way through here. And, uh, I apologize for recording from the screen and then the, I'm sure you're seeing all this refresh rate and stuff uh, in the future I'll have um, some software to record directly from the screen and we can avoid this but anyway in a previous video I mentioned the program PIP if you're not aware of what that is let me open the about file it's a planetary imaging preprocessor. And uh, this is an all around great program. It's free. Um, I've downloaded it several times and I've never had any viruses from it or that sort of thing. So it should be safe for you. But um, to me, this is indispensable. I use it for a lot of different stuff. I also use it for um, converting my Canon EOS dot movie files to uh, AVI clips, which then I can process and registax if I'm doing uh, planetary with a DSLR that's really convenient um, especially being free but anyway we'll take our file here and we'll drag it into uh, the PIP program this window is gonna probably pester you a little bit but just minimize that out and uh, down here at the bottom select planetary come up here to the output options tab select AVI then I go to the do processing tab so start processing for those of you who don't know uh, a really high focal ratio telescope is ideal for planetary so you want to get up there you want to you want to be up in f16 up whether you need a Barlow or what but um, if you start real, with a really low focal ratio telescope you're probably not going to get the magnification you need for planetary um, it's really a good idea to own two telescopes, one for DSO and one for uh, planetary because it's two completely different animals. But anyway, okay, open output folder. Let me click on this new AVI clip and show you the difference in this one from the previous. You see how the image is staying centered and only the really good frames were kept. This is going to be a huge advantage when you're stacking in Registack 6 with your line points where normally you, if I had used the original AVI, I'd have the really long bars coming off of here showing the drift and the um, align points. Now I have a, a perfectly centered Jupiter uh, AVI clip to use. And so you see the advantage in that. That's uh, This is a really good tip, so I hope this... Um, this helps you. Um, there's some there's some guys out there that that, that are using really high end telescopes and stuff that um, that maybe their their alignment wasn't so great and they don't have a AVI clip that's clean. So you see what I ended up with here. It's great. So I'm gonna close this out. And again, I apologize for, you know, cameras like uh, getting seasick probably and this refresh rate is probably really not the uh, best thing on your eyes, but we'll get that fixed in the future. Um, 
shouldn't be too much longer. I'll get some software to record directly from the screen. Yeah. Used file format, not available for drag drop. Okay, whatever. So, we will go to select file, desktop, somewhere up here. I got so much stuff going on at one time, it's, it's hard to keep up with. Okay, there we go. It's open. Okay. Um, so, with this particular example, I'm using a minimum distance between 10, minimum distance from edge 20, and just the default here. Let me see the rest of my settings. If, best frames 90% um, normally this number would be lower but because I've pre-processed this AVI clip I can go a little higher with it and a number of frames is 1703 so set of line points okay, it doesn't look like many but it's, it's gonna work out pretty good so I'm gonna stick with that it's not as demanding on my PC either so hit align okay we're back and the uh, alignment's finished see it's uh, <clears throat> 1,533 of 1,703 frames 544 go to uh, limit show you my settings one more time Okay, you see my align points? No movement. None of them crazy lines coming off, scaring you to death and that sort of thing. This is a good alignment, thanks to uh, PIPP. Okay, I'm not gonna use drizzling here. Um, I will go to, uh, I will use default correct geometry everything else the same and stack and this is going to take forever so I'm not gonna bore you with uh, small talk I will pause the video and I'll be back from here uh, I'm gonna load my scheme I've got two that I use one when I shoot with camera one when I just use general stuff planetary webcams I've modded or Next image five or that sort of thing, whatever. But uh, we'll open this one. Okay, you see all the contrast that brought out? I've actually got a moon right here. Can you see that? I'll have to go back and check and see exactly which one it is because uh, I don't remember. But that's a pretty decent image already. Uh, let me show you my wavelets. I use a progressive from uh, layer one down, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. And then the sliders are in the position that you see. Um, I don't need to crop because PIPP already took care of that for me. So um, that also helps speed up the process of Registax because if you've got your initial frame and it's way out here like this, you know, you're processing all of this space data also and uh, in each individual frame and that's gonna slow it down. Okay, you see at the very top right it says color mixing. You see this uh, blue slider, if I move it to the right, just pick up that blue part of the histogram a little bit, it's awfully low. Come to the uh, hue section Whoa, <laughs> yeah, don't overdo it. That's too much, the center's blown out. You have to toy with this, but it, it, don't worry, you can you, you can keep adjusting it until you get it like you want it.
can bring your saturation up here. Um, your lightness is going to help you a lot. It's a little too much. I was trying to sneak that moon in there, but I don't think I my exposure will account for that without tearing the planet up. But there you can see uh, a whole lot more neutral balance of color in Jupiter rather than a green blob of mess. Um, this uh, chromatic aberration, this outside ring here of light, I can fix in Photoshop, no big deal. Contrast, brightness, play around with all these settings, get it like you want it, and then uh, make sure you get a do all, save your image, and then you can open it in Photoshop and, and do a whole lot more with it. But you can see uh, just what can be done using that PIPP. I would not have been able to get this result without that program. My line points would have been all over the place and I wouldn't have got as clean of a stack. And um, yeah, this is a, from a Mi DS90, really cheap telescope, nothing real spectacular. Now, granted, uh, a higher focal ratio telescope, better optics, that sort of thing, you're gonna get better results, more aperture, that sort of thing. But I'm um, trying to find a telescope for this video that, that might be common to uh, most people. And let me finish my edits. Um, that, that part of the video takes way too long because I like to sit there and fine tune every little thing. I'm just showing you the basics to get you started and get you a, a good, clean, neutral Jupiter to work with. And uh, I'll meet you back at Photoshop. Okay, we're back in Photoshop. And as you can see, I've got this zoomed in all the way in to the edge. And you see the, uh, the result of the chromatic aberration from the achromatic refractor. Um, take your, uh, I'm sorry, go into um, where it says exposure. Click on this. And then right here where the gamma correction is, if you'll grab that and just ease it to the right, it doesn't take a whole lot. You see what that does? If you go too far with it, you start detracting from your uh, the edge of your planet. But uh, this is a really, it starts at one, by the way. Just ease it over until you've lost that. I'm gonna come back up here to uh, view, fit on uh, screen. And you see I've, I've lost all my chromatic aberration, the ring around the planet. So really easy tip to, to get rid of that fast and, and friendly. Now I'm going to show you some AVI clips and also some dot movie clips. Um, and in a previous video where I said uh, DSLR rivaling planetary work against, uh, say, versus a planetary webcam, I want to show you some AVI clips that I took with both... Uh, the camera in uh, video crop mode and also with planetary webcams and uh, and you can be the judge of that.